Hello friends, welcome back to the shop. Today is Sunday, March 14th. March 14th, high day. If you don't know what that means, don't worry about it. Cold. Got cold again. It's It was in the low 40s when I got up this morning. I got yard work to do today and uh, darn it, it's got to warm up before I can do it because I don't like the cold. Uh, anyway, I hope you're all doing well on this Sunday. Going to do yard work, not doing any pipe work today. So let me tell you what I got here. This is my uh, 7LE 311KS, I believe. Nice 7LE poker. Thank you, Christian. My buddy Christian gave this to me, and I love the pipe. Got a Larry Blackett tamper. Look at that eagle. Larry, I just love the detail on Larry's tampers. I know it seems like I'm doing commercials for him, uh, and I'm glad to do commercials for him because I, you know, I love what he love what he does. But uh, buttons for your britches on Instagram if you're interested. And the lighter from my dear friend Ben. Thank you, Ben. So uh, lots of friends represented here today. So also the way the sun's coming through the window behind me. There's going to be massive clouds of smoke. I apologize for that. There's nothing I can do about it. So I, I got a, a, a treat for you today, or at least I hope you'll find it to be a treat. Um, I don't know how many of you remember this magazine. It's a great magazine, Pipes and Tobacco. They stopped They stopped it last year, actually, maybe the end of 2019. I don't remember. But I really enjoyed this. It was, it was great magazine that would have you know it's got all the typical ads and stuff in it but it also had some great articles uh, articles on pipe makers uh, articles on on tobacco and briar and meerschaum and everything else uh, but one of the things that it had that was fantastic was a column a monthly column called uh, i'm sorry it was quarterly a quarterly column uh, called ask chuck now, Chuck Stanton was one of the editors of, of the magazine and very knowledgeable guy. And I'm sure he had a research staff working with him. Uh, so he get questions like, I've got a pipe that's got this stamping on it. Can you help me date it? And he would you know, almost always have an answer for the person. Or, you know, here's a picture of an unusual pipe that I found in my grandfather's attic. Can, what can you tell me about it? Or, you know, sometimes it was a bit more practical. Things like, um, I got a, a ghosted pipe. What can I do to get rid of that? Or uh, how much cake should I have in my pipe? You know, those sorts of things. So, by the way, I didn't mention I'm smoking Pegasus this morning. Man, I'll say more about Pegasus at the end. So... I was reading this this morning, and one of the, the question and answers in the Ask Chuck column struck me, and I thought, you know, i got to share this. And, of course, this magazine is now out of print, so I don't think I'm violating any copyright or anything by, by reading this. Um, you know, so the questions he got this time, one was... Uh, Distinguishing between Emil and, and Jess Chonowitz uh, in terms of their stamping of the pipes, the father and son. Uh, a very unusual baseball pipe, which he was able to find an advertisement for. Uh, you know, so it's that sort of stuff. And here's the question. I'm going to read the question, and then I'm going to read Chuck's answer. And I think you're going to enjoy this. The, title, the question is titled Blocked Tobacco Chamber, and it was submitted by someone calling themselves Witsy, who uh, sent it through cyberspace, meaning it was an email or a website in, uh, submission. So Blocked Tobacco Chamber. About two weeks ago, my left thumb became stuck in the bowl of my pipe. At first, I found this to be a novel occurrence, but it has now become more of an annoyance than anything else. Is there anything I can do? And Chuck responds, Smoking that pipe will be difficult. 
obviously, since your thumb is blocking the flow of oxygen, making tobacco combustion impossible. So the thumb must come out. Obviously, we do not wish to risk the pipe in any way, but thumbs are common and easily disposed of. Amputation is relatively simple, and many efficient tools for the purpose may be found in any home toolbox. However, if you are sensitive to infection, faint easily, or perhaps just a bit clumsy, and then in parentheses, all thumbs, haha, uh -huh, you may choose to have the thumb removed by a professional surgeon or a cooperative neighbor. The important thing is to mask the pipe carefully, because tears and blood can stain the bowl especially a meerschaum. You did not mention the type of pipe involved, but even briar is difficult to clean when bodily fluids get on the finish, and hemoglobin inside the bowl may require the inconvenience of prematurely reaming and cleaning the tobacco chamber. To be safe, mask the pipe with plastic and sturdy tape before surgery, being careful, of course, not to get any adhesive on the pipe itself. To further avoid harming the pipe, it is also imperative that you use a good table vise and clamp the thumb, never the pipe ball, during the sawing and or hacking. Postoperatively, the thumb will shrink rapidly and you should be able to remove it without delay. Remembering to twist counterclockwise, pulling out with even pressure until it is extracted. If the thumb now has scratched the carbon cake, sand the inside of the bowl to an even consistency with 600 grit sandpaper wrapped around a wooden dowel of appropriate diameter. If you wait a couple of days, however, the thumb should shrink enough so that it will drop out without any sort of coaxing on your part. Probably a better strategy because it does not risk flaking or chipping the cake under pressure. However, do not wait more than two days as the briar may begin to absorb the aroma of the decomposing digit and few tobacco blends are enhanced by this characteristic. I do not recommend smoking the tobacco that has remained in the pipe during this time except for cherry blends. Otherwise, refill with fresh tobacco before smoking. As a side benefit, you might consider drying the thumb in hot desert sand for a few weeks to further shrink and mummify it, then have a silver or brass cap attached to the base, perhaps by a local jeweler, and thereby acquire a very nice tamper as a memento. Just be sure that it has sufficiently diminished in diameter. It is a difficult procedure to remove an oversized tamper that has become lodged in a pipe ball. <laughs> I thought that was great. I, <laughs> what I liked about that was it was really just a little throwaway comment. A guy, I think, was being goofy, uh, you know, given he identified himself as Witsy. Uh, but he clearly was talking about it, it wouldn't fit anymore, uh, and, and Chuck just did a wonderful job of taking that to the extreme and turning it into something very funny. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did. I, I was laughing quite a bit at that this morning. Uh, so Pegasus, yeah, i um, been talking to my buddy Everett Young about this. I've had it years ago, many years ago. I, I don't remember it really. I remembered it was a good burly, but I don't really remember much about it. So I got some of this on Friday, and man, it is a very good burly. Um, it's it's extremely good, solid. There's some uh, I think there's some Virginians and Black Cavendish, so it's it's really a a very simple blend in a lot of ways, but it's got that fantastic Cornell and Deal burly, and I gotta tell you, I, I, I've only been smoking this uh, for three days now, but I did have it in the past, and I'm remembering it. People have asked me, you know, what's a good replacement for Carter Hall? This isn't this isn't Carter Hall. This is this is more like Carter Hall without the topic. You know, it's it's a very smooth, solid burley. Uh, doesn't have any unnatural flavor to it at all. A little bit of Virginia in there for sweetness and they use um, black Cavendish which just you know I, I think black Cavendish is, is a wonderful 
binder and and mellower of of tobaccos it just it just is magic in, in the right hands and it clearly was in the right hands with this one this is about another uh bob ronowski blend so bob was uh the blender behind haunted bookshop and old joe Krantz. and this is right in that category but no preak and just a great morning blend uh to have with some coffee I think, you know, I don't know what's going on with Carter Hall, but if it really is gone, um, this could easily fill, the, fill the, the void. In fact, I would even go so far as to say I might prefer this. I ran out of space over here. Yeah, I might prefer this because as much as I love Carter Hall, it does have a somewhat... Uh, I hate to say chemical, but but there's a topping there that I that I notice, and I, I I've never liked. You know, I love the the burly in it, and the cocoa and, and all that, but there's this little little hint of something that I that I don't like. It makes it kind of less than perfect. This Pegasus is pretty darn near perfect. So if you're a Carter Hall fan and you've been missing it because it's not available these days. Try some Pegasus. You might uh, you might be surprised. Well, folks, that's about all I got uh, for you this morning. I've uh, got yard work to do today. You know, just sort of clean up post winter cleanup and get things ready for uh, for lawn mowing season. Got to do a few other things outside. Got some rails I gotta fix in my split rail fence, but I'm thinking about getting the this stretch of fence with a gate in it replaced because it's it's starting to show pretty significant wear and shakiness and whatnot. So I might not do the um I might not go out and buy a couple of new rails. I might just do some patching up with two by fours just to keep it falling yeah, it's it's not a I won't be a craftsman when I'm working on the fence how's that <laughs> but I do think before uh, the end of the spring we're probably gonna get a new stretch put in well guys I hope you're having a great Sunday I hope you're looking forward to the week ahead and uh, I hope you don't have too much yard work to do <laughs> So, until we speak again, I will look forward to talking to you all again very soon. Goodbye now.